is the Lefroy workshop. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, no, this is this is Compass Box. This is the Compass Box. Um, Ten years of stranger and stranger whiskey um, seminar. I guess seminar is really the wrong word. That suggests we're going to teach you stuff. I don't know. If, I don't know if we can teach. I don't know. Maybe we will. I will. We'll call teach you. Can't teach it. Yes. Can't okay. teach it. You're either born with it or it's forget about it. <laughs> there you go. But this is this is a, a this is a different kind of whiskey tasting. Um, a lot of what I've done before, and what a lot of people do, is I'll come in, they'll put six whiskeys in front of you, and we'll talk about the whiskeys, and we'll talk about what's the liquid. We'll tell you what, how it was made. We'll deconstruct it, and we'll talk about the aromas and the flavors, and we'll get all geeky, and then and then then you go to the next seminar, I guess. But um, I wanted to tell a story, one big story. Um, which is really comprised of all these individual stories, or actually all these individual stories. Can everybody see this? Um, because for the last 10 years, uh, we at Compass Box have been working with Stranger and Stranger, um, a design agency founded in London, but now with offices here in New York and in San Francisco. And 10 years, I'm going to introduce these guys in a nice way. Um, 10 years is a long, in our industry, is a long time for. Uh, businesses like ours to work with, the, with design agencies, uh, especially when you, the, the big companies, you know, they like to change design agencies every time there's a marketing director change and all that kind of stuff. But we, you know, we've been working 10 years and I think that is worth celebrating, particularly when you look at the body of work. What we do at Compass Box is not just about making whiskeys, it's about creating every, bo every bottle and everything you've got in front of you. It's, it's at the end of the day about the whiskey and the liquid in the bottle, right? But it's really more than that with, with our business. You know, we think about names, and we think about package design, and we think about each one of these represents a story. Each one of these whiskeys, the, all these whiskeys we've done over the last 10 years, is its own little biosphere, little poetic biosphere, or, or maybe a metaphoric biosphere, or maybe even a provocative biosphere. It's its own little world, <laughs> its own little world. And we couldn't have done it without these guys. So let me introduce. Um, the founder of Stranger and Stranger, Kevin Shaw. Okay. Happy to be here. And the group CEO, Ivan Bell. So, ten years ago, or maybe a little more, I, through, through uh, some, a mutual acquaintance, yeah. I walked into your office in, uh, in London and uh, the tiny office. It was a tiny little office. It really <laughs> wasn't. Um, and there was like music playing, and there were like, I don't know, at that point, maybe how many people would have been in the room? It was probably about four. Four or so? Radiohead. Radiohead was playing. <laughs> and everybody was staring at their screen working. And, uh, and I sat right, I think you pull up a chair next to your, 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 your screen, and we just started talking. And. Uh, and, it's, and it started, and I, I, I'd known of these guys and admired their work, and back then it was mostly wine, yeah? yeah? And you still do a lot of wine, and, as well as spirits and, and, and other things, but back then it was mostly wine, and I really admired, being an old wine geek, I really admired their work. Yeah. Um, and never thought I could, it would, I didn't know if it would be right, I didn't know, I could, they, they were like doing real serious work, and it's like, I was this tiny little company, I, I can't afford to work with serious people. <laughs> <laughs> But somehow it worked. Somehow it worked, and, uh, and now it's been ten years. So what we want to do? You seem very serious at the time, by the way. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I sometimes am. <laughs> I guess. Um, yeah. So we're going to take you through six whiskeys. So we need to get into the whiskey, and then we're just going to talk to you about the stories. Every, what you each, each of you have in those tubes, you've got this poster, and you know the guys at Stranger and Stranger designed this to to illustrate all the work we've done. It's like. It's ridiculous, you know, all, 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 all whiskey, not ridiculous in a good way, um, all the whiskeys we, we've done. Um, so I'm going to kick off with First Whiskey, and then I want Kevin and Ivan to tell you a little bit about their business, because you probably have never been to a whiskey tasting where they bring in the people they collaborate with, and they, you get to learn about the whiskeys and, and the ideas from a different perspective. So we're going to do that, but let's start with the whiskey. So this is a bit of a greatest hits. So we pulled some whiskeys out of our archive. Uh, we, Western Carriers in New Jersey, we keep a, a small archive, obviously we have an archive in Scotland, uh, a small archive of whiskey. So we pulled some stuff out, like the first one. Um, it's very difficult to find first whiskey, so back row left. I'm, this is yours, but I'm just 
Okay. Um, is where we'll start. And this is hedonism quindecimus. I apologize. You should each have one of these. And if we find them, we'll, get, we'll come to our table after the tasting. We'll give you one. This is your guide to what we're tasting. Because I don't think what you have, it just has names on it. But this has the recipes for every, every whiskey. It's got the labels, all important for the, the lab, labels. And somehow the guy, the organizers took these away and they, they just can't find them at the moment. So I apologize for that. But if we find them, come to our table after tasting, we'll give you one of these. But anyway, we're starting with hedonism quindecimus. So I, I'm not gonna go into the whole detail on the founding of the company, all that stuff. And, um, and I'll just presume a little bit of knowledge on Compass Box if, you, if you've come here. And if you, if, I, if, if you need a little bit more, then come to the table afterwards and we'll fill in all the blanks. Fill in all the blanks. Hedonism Condecimus was something we did for our 15th anniversary. Is this Sorry. the original hedonism that you uh, introduced at Whiskey Fest in the early 2000s, like 1990s? It is not. It is not. But it's, it's uh, just as interesting. <laughs> 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 this is what we've made to celebrate our 15th company anniversaries. Thus, Quindecimus, right? Because everyone knows what Quindecimus means, right? Um, Latin scholars. Um, so this was basically our classic hedonism, which is grain whiskey. Yeah? And the classic hedonism tends to be in the age, about average of about 18 years old. And, and this is a much older age profile. I'm, I'm breaking the law by something you will know about our transparency campaign, right? <laughs> <laughs> I have a question about age whiskey. Tell us about it. Is that, are you asking, would you like to know the age of all I the whiskeys that we have in the recipes? recipes? Fine, thank you. That's a blanket, <laughs> blanket <laughs> now. So now we are, yes? So I would like to ask, because I look at Quindesimus. I bought several bottles of this. It's, it's one of my all-time favorite bottles, if not my favorite bottle. Yeah, special stuff. But it's a blend, right? It's a blend of whiskeys, grain whiskeys from different distillers. And it's typically looked down upon from a you know, purest scotch standpoint. Yeah. Well, and yet, I understand what you're saying. And yet, the things you guys are doing are extraordinary. So I was hoping you could maybe talk about how you were able to bring out those flavors okay. in a blend, okay. and how that is versus single malt. Because okay. I think that is something that is let me, let me address really, that. really special. Let me that. That. Um, it's a very good point. While, while I'm addressing that, do swirl and sniff this quindecimus. So this is a, the age profile here. Um, in Quindecimus, I've got all the details here. I've made so many whiskeys, as you can see, I can't remember all the details. Um, but uh, there, let's see, 45% of this is from the Port Dundas Distillery. Um, uh, sorry, F54. And it's whiskeys 20 and 25 years old. There's some Dumbarton single grain whiskey in there at 28 years old, some Loch Lomond uh, at 32, and some North British at 20. So you've got a range from 20 to 32 years old. Um, and the reason we blend ages is to create complexity. I'm gonna, I'm gonna answer your question. All grain whiskeys, no malt whiskeys, will come to malt whiskey. Those are the two kinds of whiskeys made in Scotland, grain and malt whiskey. Um, all these whiskeys aged in American oak, so you're getting this lovely American oak vanilla character. Now, to address your question, we blend whiskeys from different distilleries. And this is a blend of just grain whiskeys. When people think of blended scotch, they usually are talking about the big brands that blend malt whiskey and grain whiskey together. Yeah? And the reason there's a re bad reputation, I contend, for those kinds of whiskeys is a lot of those big global uh, like, you know, brands that we see, see all over the world, some of them to a taste of people like yourselves are kind of boring, and, and it's kind of tarnished the whole reputation of the category. But forget about blends. When, I, when you come to a compass box tasting, forget about the distinction between blend and single malt. Single malt just means it comes from one single distillery. But even most of those single malts are blends of different casks. Absolutely. from that distillery. Yeah? Blending is part and parcel of how most of the great whiskeys in Scotland are made. So think of what we're doing. Think of Scotland as our distillery, right? And we're blending whiskeys from different distilleries to make things that are proprietary and ours that help us tell a story. This is the first whiskey we ever made was Hedonism, so that's why we wanted to use it for our 15th anniversary. But enough for me, okay? I want to turn over for a little bit to, to Kevin and Ivor to tell you a little bit about their business, what they do, how we met, and wherever you want to go with that. Yeah. Um, Storytellers. Sorry. Yeah. So I remember you coming in. Uh, we'd looked at your stuff for a, a bit, and I thought that you were doing really interesting things, and you seemed to be like the bad boy of the whiskey business, because you were like throwing staves in where you shouldn't be throwing staves in. And we all thought you were going to get arrested or banned or something like that. <laughs> then you arrived. It was, it was the... 
It was the optimism, wasn't it? And you came, yeah. you came in and you said, look, everybody's miserable because of the recession and all this. Let's do something a bit kind of funky and lift them up. And Anyone in this room remember 2008? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. Financial crisis? <laughs> And I don't think we'd have that kind of brief before. And that was really refreshing. And it started us up doing these really simple, single-minded kind of thoughts of things. Um, and that's carried on, I think, all the way through. The one that I remember the most is Spice Tree. And you always come in, came in with great names and stories behind the names and the fact that you blended them and it reminded you of this and that. And we were always trying to think of how to tell a story on here. Spice tree was two words. Do you remember? Yeah. Psychedelic elegance. That was one, and that was the brief, and that was it. It's psychedelic elegance. Okay, we can work with that. And I think that's that's how we kicked off the whole the whole process. And it's been it's been great. And, and it's a it's a complete. This is all we do. This is what we do for a living. This is all we do. So we know the industry inside and out. Every single label that's ever been printed. And it's a really iconic collection of, of labels, I think. And everybody and every client that we met, every new client that we see, looks to Compass Box as, as a, I wish we could be like that. It, it, there's an irreverence, there's a creativity, there's, the, it's not corporate, it's passionate and, and expressive. Mm. Um, and, uh, and they're all different because even though this is all brown whiskey in the same, same bottle, they're all, they've all got their characters and they're all different liquids. I think you've educated us a little bit on whiskey because we have to drink them all. Obviously. We're going to finish with the whiskey that we worked on just for Strain for, for you. Yeah. Um, so we have done a little whiskey tasting with you guys. One, one of the things that was really attracted me to working with Strangers and Strangers because I started my working career wanting to be in the wine business. And I wanted to be a winemaker and I went to France and California and I did all that. And then I got into the world of Scotch whiskey. And I always thought that the world of Scotch whiskey ought to be learning from the world of wine, particularly new, new world, quote unquote, wines, in terms of how you bring personality to your, your, your brand and, 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 and lessons about not taking yourself too seriously, even if your product is really serious. Um, or, and, and that's, I think that, that was part of my interest in what you guys were doing because you were doing a lot of work in wine. And I just do have always believed there's so much you can. And I'm frequently inspired by the whole world of wine. So I think that was there was something, there was something there. Was something there. Yeah. And all you had at the time was a bunch of people in kilts. With the greatest respect to anybody who was in kilts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't look. <laughs> um. Right. Let's do the next whiskey. So, uh, so next next one um, is Back Row Center, and this is called Juveniles. And uh, which version? Of it? This is the most, the most recent version. Thank you. Awesome. awesome. So there's our, our Codecimus, right? Um, and next is Juveniles. And this is, a, this is actually a recent one. So we're not going in any chronological order. We're just kind of going in an order that made sense for, for the whiskeys, the styles of the whiskeys. So we're going to kind of jump a little back and forth in terms of time. Um, but this is a, we, we, we've done a couple collaborations with this wine bar in Paris called Juveniles over the years. Yeah, it's a question. This is the one that's coming out shortly in the This US. is, yeah, exactly. This is coming out as we speak, right? Yes. Perfect for December. Perfect for, it is perfect for December. Why do we say that, Jazz? Um, and when we, 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 so we, when we briefed this in to you guys uh, when, earlier this year, I, I wrote the story of the owner of the Juveniles wine bar, Tim Johnston. He's a Scottish guy, but he's been in Paris for years, decades. And it's one of the most famous little wine bar restaurants in, in, in Paris. And in the past, whenever we'd done a whiskey for him, and I did one when it first started, well, before the Stranger Stranger Days, we always had this image of a jester. And you can see it in the center of the label when you get up close to it. That was on every label in one way or another, on the back label or something like that. But, uh, and so that was part of the brief. Was, this is who we're making it for, this, this, this really cheeky, he's in his like, late 60s, but I, last time I was in his restaurant a couple months ago, he was wearing a t-shirt that read, gluten tolerant. <laughs> so this is the kind of person we're talking about, right? And I described that in my brief to, to you guys. And I said, we have to use the jester somewhere. And, uh, and we wanted something um, that looked to the world of wine, in particular the world of French wine and spirits. And that was it. And then, how did we go from there, Ivan, to a so, bell? So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so obviously we then, Having done loads of wines as well, we go back and we look at 
champagne houses and things like that, and we borrow things. So basically, this is a typical high-end French wine label, really, but it happens to be on a whiskey bottle. And it's got all of those wonderful cues in there, the, the goals, the leaf, everything. So, yeah, it's just storytelling, basically. But the thing is, John, and he's very modest about this, he, he's great as a client, because basically, we don't get a lot of restrictions with him. He lets us do what we're good at doing, which is basically creating and designing. Um, so I'd like to say thank you for that because we don't get many clients like that. But you know why I think this is, and this is collaboration, whether you're talking about packaging design like this or, or other worlds of, other art worlds, is the reason we don't have, we, we can give you guys so much latitude and, and, and deliver, I like to deliver briefs that are as short as possible and succinct as possible. The brief thing, the, 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 the idea for the for the design that the, the, the designers then take and, and, and use to, 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 for inspiration, to, but um, and for guidelines as well. But um, I think we've just worked together for such a t period of time now that yeah. we're kind of aligned. There is a shorthand, that's for sure. Yeah, there is, and you guys kind of yeah, we, you know what I'm going to like, and and I kind of can give you something, and I just know we're going to get something back that we like, and we just don't even have to. Come and see you even every time. Sometimes I just email it to you. <laughs> you guys have been married for 10 years. We've been married for 10 years. <laughs> so it's that kind of relationship, right? At what, uh, at yes. what point in the design process do you taste the whiskey? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's, it's uh, different. So it depends, depends on the project. <laughs> yes. Sometimes, it yeah, the to be honest, because sometimes we'll brief them and you guys won't have tasted the whiskey, though. Yeah. I, I try not to taste anything. And yeah, there's a reason for that. Tell yeah, me yeah. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, you always get people describing the product, you know, and it sounds amazing when they describe it. It's like in your head, it's fantastic because you're getting the passion and the, the, their passion about it. I had a few bad experiences where it, <laughs> the, the product was shocking and it actually affected the. <laughs> Not with John, by the way. No. <laughs> <laughs> not, not yet. Uh, but when, 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 I can't give it. I'm yeah, just uh, very spotless yeah. minded there. Um, but there's a, but where the, where the product was shocking, and it affected the creative process. Because I'm trying to be evocative and trying to convince people to to pick this thing up, and I felt like I was conning them, and I couldn't. So I made the decision to not taste anything before before. I designed it. I mean, all the designers, and there's a few of them, you know, they're all different. They'll, they're, they're whores, so they'll probably taste everything. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, 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 I couldn't do it. I can't, I can't design, I can't create stuff unless it's really amazing. I don't want to be disappointed, so I just don't risk it. But the descriptions that you get from John are fantastic. It's like, I'm salivating reading the description. That's what I want to sell. You had a question? So uh, again, I would agree with uh, just salivating at the uh, description before anything is even released. I would ask that, you know, right now, you guys started at a time where whiskey was kind of up there in, for anybody's grabs. Obviously, that's changed over the last 15, 16, 17 years since you guys have started. Is that a challenge now, like with what you guys are doing from a blending standpoint to you know, still maintain that still you know, that, that that high performance that a lot of us said. You know, we, we see Compass Box. We know, hey, if it's Compass Box, we buy it. We don't need to know what the review is. We don't need to taste it. We know it's just incredible right away. That being said, and, and not saying it's changing, but you know, the the environment of what you guys are dealing with is changing. And, and how are you guys dealing with that? Is that something that you guys are encompassing? And is that something that's becoming a challenge? I think well, I'll speak to this because it's about blending. And it's, um, yeah, the other world is becoming so much more knowledgeable about whiskey, and I think that's a really good thing. I mean, these kind of seminars, I've been doing the Whiskey, whiskey Fest for uh, 18 years, yeah. And you know, this level of sophistication now is so much greater, and that's a good thing. So for us, is it, is it challenging? Um, Maybe it is more challenging because actually there's there's more the more demanding and larger group of more demanding people out there in the world. We have and one of the ways we address this is we have a, a definition. We just hired a new assistant whiskey maker. You know, we're growing our whiskey making team. And one of the things that I, I defined for him is I said 
part of your role will be ensuring the quality of everything we make, ensuring all the quality of all the casts that we bring in to, to, to use in creating our recipes. And I said, but uh, to us, quality isn't the same as quality for other companies. And I define, for us, quality is what we call compelling quality. So quality, compelling quality. So he's in charge of ensuring every cask has compelling quality. And every recipe that we put into the bottle will have compelling quality. What I mean by that is not just, quality can be just lack of flaws in the world that we work in. But for me, compelling quality is something that calls you back to the glass. Something that has something special about it. Maybe you can't always articulate it, and that's okay. But that compelling quality brings you back. Brings you back. I hope you find it in the juveniles. In Spice Tree Extravaganza, which is the next one, I contend there's compelling quality here. And I'm happy to argue that with anybody here. <laughs> Um, good question. What's in uh, the juveniles? In, in the juveniles. Um, juveniles is a combination. Again, you should all have these, and that answer would be that question would be answered. Um, it is. I will tell you exactly. Um, Strathmill, Balmenich, and Kleinleach distilleries form the core. Okay, it's roughly a third of each of those. Strathmill and American oak, Balmenich and American oak, Klein, or sorry, Balmenich and, and, and sherry, and Kleinleach and American oak. A touch of uh, old Glendullen, um, uh, aged in first fill sherry, just 2% of that, just to give it a little underlying richness. Um, all the whiskeys in there between um, small, a third of them 10 years old, some beautiful um, straff mill from American Oak Hogsheads, and the rest is 17, 15, 17, 18 years old. Yeah, question? Yeah, a quick question. You, you've mentioned a few times about uh, reflecting on your history with wine, uh, etc. So when, when you do that, when you reflect on, on that experience, is it more from a heritage perspective? Is it uh, uh, aspirational? Is it uh, more from, from an influence on the spirit itself? Or how, how would you describe that? I, I, I will, as I, I'll describe that and while you guys swirl and sniff your, your spice tree extravaganza. Yeah, then we'll come back and talk about that. Um, I think it's just ideas. It's, it's, uh, the question, I think the answer is it, it, there, there are ideas that inspire what we do. Um, and it could be anything from the way people talk about wine to the, the approach to oak. So with something like Spice Tree, this is Spice Tree Extravaganza because this is a limited edition version of Spice Tree that we released two years ago, I think, two, three years ago. Illegal. Illegal. Well, so, yeah, and totally inspired by the world of wine to answer your question. Correct. The original Spice Tree was we used French oak interstaves, super high quality French oak in the form of interstaves that was borrowed from the wine business. Winemakers around the world will use these things. Um, it's a way of rejuvenating an old barrel. And it made the kind of staves we were buying from this, this, this Cooperage in the Beauce in France, created this lovely clove cardamom spice character that complemented the malt whiskey. And got us in trouble, you know, because the Scotch Whiskey Association declared it as illegal. Anyway, that's another story for another seminar, we, we got over it, we, did, we found another way, we had to stop making it for a couple years, and we found another way to, to get that French oak into some custom made barrels, but while we were taking the two years off, we went to Stranger and Stranger, and that's when we briefed in the psychedelic elegance, but you forgot the first line that came before that, and it was on, I remember I put, did, a, did a landscape page, and I, and I, I typed, um, um, and, and uh, this is not condoning the use of recreational drugs. <laughs> <laughs> they wrote, I wasn't um, going to say that. <laughs> they wrote, they wrote, um, but I was trying to get them into the, my head to understand what I kind of what I wanted this label to, to feel like. So I wrote, imagine you're. You're, you're, you're lying on your back on acid, <laughs> staring up at the spice tree. Yeah. Uh, right? Acid. And then we distilled that down even further to this idea of psychedelic elegance. But stuff like that, it, it sounds silly, might sound provocative, it might sound goofy, whatever. But it, it's very specific. Well, it's, I think it's specific in a sense. Very specific. <laughs> How many <laughs> companies have <laughs> How many what? How many companies have copied you since then? Well, well, that's another story. That's another story. But, that, but from that little idea came the Spice Tree label. And while that's on our stand, you can see, oh, it's, it's here. Yeah. Um, but when we came to celebrate the 10th anniversary of Spice Tree being declared illegal, the original Spice Tree, we did extravaganza. 
And that's when we, when, when then you guys, and this is the kind of stuff I really love that you guys do that I don't see other designers in our world doing. When you get a, a, a when you get this bottle in front of you, this is, this is, it's a bit of a Where's Waldo kind of thing. <laughs> Amen. I mean, get in there and look at the detail and the little illustrations. There's little, like, creatures in here that I hadn't, didn't even notice until after we bottled the whiskey and had approved the labels and everything, and it's cool. It's fun. Yeah. You know, it's, do, you know I, do you know how much I said that, so? <laughs> <laughs> Not to mention the outer shipper. I mean, no, the, the box that comes in. Not to mention the box that it comes in. Thank you, Jazz. The, I mean, the gift boxes, which we're not seeing. We're, we've left half the designs of, of, of outside the room. I'm really sorry, guys. The next whiskey is called Flaming Heart. Yes. This is Flaming Heart. And this is the sixth edition. This is just being released, or has just been released. Awesome. So now we're going to get into malt whiskey with uh, a bit of smoke. Oh, yeah. This is malt whiskey that has a, and then that's the flaming part of the name. And we're going to get into some whiskey that has a malt whiskey in here that um, has a lovely sweetness because there's, again, French oak aging here, the same time we use, a similar kind that we use for spice tree. That's the sweet part, the flaming, the hard part. So flaming is the smoke part. Yeah. And so I love this. So every flaming heart we've done with Stranger and Stranger, and that's four of the six, um, has been the same look and feel. And most people, when we do tastings with new bottles of Flaming Heart, a lot of people don't even actually realize the labels changed sometimes. But they changed actually quite significantly. Yeah. Yeah. You maintain some of the core elements and just kind of tweaked it and evolved it over time. Yeah. But it, is, it is that thing, as you say, it's like the, the thing that we really like doing is putting things in there that you don't see at first sight. So you, you, it's like getting to have a relationship with the bottle. And you see things later that you think, oh, I didn't see that. There's mm -hmm. definitely the little things in there. Yeah. <laughs> there is exactly that. We need a higher resolution picture of sitting up, uh, sitting up on the weather. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, there's things on this that when we, when Where's we Waldo, revealed basically? this and blew it up large on the screen, I remember John saying, is that in the original? I said, yes, it is actually is in the original. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a lot darker then, but it's, it is exactly that. Yeah. When's the next big anniversary of yours coming out? What's the... Was 20 in two years. 20. For 20, like Kratos, something with a magnifying yeah, glass, we could find John Glazer in the label. We haven't got, well, have got there yet. Funny you should say that. Well, <laughs> We're working on it. Yeah. John is actually on the, in, in one of the labels. Oh, look, look at that. that. <laughs> there is, yeah, it's in there. It is. Yeah, so the idea for this was actually, it started as a tattoo idea, and, and, and then and we quickly realized that it was going to look like rum, but quite definitely we took the same kind of idea and kind of the rock and roll behind that idea and shaped it into something that felt more scotch whiskey. Sorry, one question. Uh, yes. The, uh, so the presentation of this is the dark bottle as opposed to the light bottle. Okay. I mean, the personality of the nose is so much darker on this particular uh, uh, whiskey than it is uh, from any of the others that we have tasted so far. Was that intentional or? That's a really good, so the question is, Dark bottle, darker yeah. label, um, much seeming darker to coincide with a much bigger, yeah. darker, maybe even whiskey. Yeah. Was that was that intentional? And I want to answer that question by saying, well, no, we didn't kind of brief it in that way, but it, there was got to be something in the process that made that work, made that happen. So it's the thing about wanting it to be to be darker and more mysterious, and it was just yeah. I mean, when John. John again, when he gives his details, he actually sometimes talks about the liquid, and, and with this it was the smokiness and pecans of it basically. So we wanted to try and draw that difference between the ones that have gone before. So there was this thing about having a dark, mysterious yeah. background, and it just it worked with the label. Is that so, really yeah. so the answer is yes. <laughs> Somehow unconscious. Good question. Yes. Do we all collaborate on the names? Do we collaborate on the names? You, usually, I or we, a, a, a team in, in, in our London office, fifteen of us in Compass Box. Usually, we come up with the names. Um, yeah. Usually, we are coming up with the name, and I, I guess, and that's important because the name has to represent the has to represent the, 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 the kernel of the idea. The name has to be representative of the, the kernel, of, of the core idea, yeah? 
And that's from that core idea comes the, 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 the brief and the, and the design. So, yeah, I, I, I'm trying to think of one when we didn't. We have worked on names in the, together in the past, but usually we bring the names. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah, a good question. Uh, yes, Yeah. Any more chance of coming out and signing with Macallan's like rivals? Is that, <laughs> that, that, McCallan is like one of those files. Like, one yeah. of those things. That you very we don't, we don't get access to a lot of Macallan, and that we, we used it for the rivals, as you point out, which is a bespoke whiskey, itself. which is which is in here somewhere. Rivals, one of the bespoke whiskeys. Um, not the moment, but you know, you know, you never know in our business because people present us parts of the whiskey. Like, what story? How do you manage to get Macallan? Because no one gets Macallan. Or Burns. Or Burns. Or Burns. Or Burns. Yeah. Yeah, it's also yeah. Well, we might be able to do something along with the Burns Blend is pretty special, but it, it, maybe this is all I can say right now. There's one other question. Yeah, for you as a designer, you guys, or as the creator, you guys as designers, how important or not important is consistency, a compass box presence beyond the name on the bottle, from yeah. bottle to bottle, label to label? That's a really good question. <laughs> consistency. What do you mean? Meaning, when I pick up, when do, you, do you think just about the one whiskey and that description you have, or is there some part of you that's also thinking about a compass box? No, I, think, I think there's an approach now. I think there's a soul to the brand, and that is whoever's working on the job. I think they they just tap into that soul. Because what do you talk about that? Cos is a designer, is the creative director, yeah. works for us. <laughs> Sorry, just I mean, put you on the spot. <laughs> is there soul? Is there soul to come to this I think, I think yeah. Stand on the table. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, I think the thing with, with Compass Box is the, the stories are so rich that when you get to tell like a really interesting narrative, no one else is really doing that. You're borrowing from the wine label language. And you, and you create a series of this, it just ends up being so different from what everyone else is doing. You don't really even have to consider being consistent. You just have to be true to the story. Mm -hmm. And that is the consistency. Mm -hmm. so. And these days, you do have to put the Compass Box over the, the, yeah. the, 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 the umbrella logo, as we call it, the top. The <laughs> but that's, yeah. the, that's the only nod towards any sort of yeah. corporate kind of mentality is that little thing at the top. Right. But you're right the rest of it is, is just free form expression of John's notes and, and names. Yeah. But I think if there is a soul, it's hard for me to soul. describe it. There is, so, there is. Yeah. I mean, there's there stuff is. that you would, you could obviously, that's just not compass box at all. Not that I'm saying the stuff you present, but you look around the world and so there is, there's something. And, and I think part of it is working with Team so team, consistently yeah. over the souls time. The souls in the team, yeah. You know, you guys, how long have you been with the business? Uh, eight, 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 eight years. Twenty-five years. 25 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you will. Because <laughs> 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 was five when he came. What is the secret? Well, the, 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 the word well, the blending casks. Single malts are, tend to be blends of casks from one single distillery. We're just blending casks from a couple different distilleries. But it's this idea of compelling quality and what's really interesting. Not just what's good, but what's interesting. And that's the way we think. And I think that's one of the things that sets apart the, the liquid. That's why, with that kind of thinking, we did this <laughs> uh, a couple of years ago as a limited edition. So this is another one we pulled out of the, the archive. This is um, a whiskey called, this is not a luxury whiskey. The name of the whiskey, it's Compass Box Whiskey. Which when it clearly is. Is it lovely? I think it is. Right there. Right Next to the price tag. I'll just wait for the secondary version of that. <laughs> so, this is a really good, I think, to pick up on your, your introduction, and thank you. Is So, okay, so we don't charge what we could charge for whiskeys, we charge based on the cost of the whiskeys, which is based primarily on the age of the whiskeys. And then we Mark it up the way we have to mark them up, and so you know we, we looked around, looked around for a long time, and seen even to some extent with envy brands that can take a whiskey that is good and, and charge a zillion dollars for it, and you know that's an increasing trend has been for many years in the world of whiskey. And we so we thought, well, you know what? Let's get people like yourselves to think about that for a minute and think about why we enjoy really good whiskey. Think about. Um, Think about what um, what great whiskey is really all about. Yeah. Uh, let's think about the importance of packaging to the liquid in the bottle. 
It can tell a story, yeah. But then we just, so we thought, okay, let's put what we think is unassailably great whiskey into this bottle. And then we went to you guys and said, uh, well, we said, well, let's look at the world of modern start. <laughs> Um, <laughs> this is not a pipe. <laughs> this is not a pipe. It's a surrealist knockoff. Um, yeah. So, uh, uh yeah. I think that's going to be too. You know, there's a lot, we've over packaged a lot of whiskies that were maybe weren't as good as they like looked and all this. So. No, no, the covers box them. <laughs> not compass box, nothing to do with John. Uh, so, when you get something that is clearly good and you package it in a way that is kind of basic, there's a really nice, there was a really nice twist on it, especially in context with the set. And I think that's where this relationship we've had and this great body of work, you can see a whiskey in relation to all these other ones. And uh, I, I think it, it stands out from the set, but it, it kind of, it, its attitude fits in there as well. See, it's a really interesting take. So, so the, the brief was basically the classic, in the 1920s or whatever painting, this is not a painting of a realistic painting of a pipe. Yeah. And written underneath it in French is, this is not a pipe. Yeah. And uh, that was yeah. the idea for the label. <laughs> and then yeah. you guys took it from there. The original idea was, that you, what, 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 what Guy told me was, the idea was we were going to have hire a bunch of uh, art students in, in Edinburgh where we do our bottling and have them actually hand yeah. write every <laughs> single label. This is an luxury, <laughs> which I thought was a really cool nice. idea yeah. and a great way to help out nice. young artists, right? But it, it, in the end, it was quite practical enough. No. Although it was it's, talking about it was actually far more practical. <laughs> actually, to, it would have been far more practical. Yeah. It's a great lead into the last whiskey, and then we're done. To have hired, you know, 50 or 100 Edinburgh art students to actually hand draw this is not a whiskey on all these yeah. labels, than it was to label the last yeah. whiskey. Yeah. Had. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so, to celebrate 10 years of working together. We have completely overdone it this time. <laughs> but we, you know, I have, you and I were talking about this a, over a year ago. We said 10 years is coming up. Yeah. Let's do something together. Um, we're going to make a whiskey. We're not going to give you guys a design brief this time. Yep. We're just going to tell you what we're making, yeah. and then you guys have at it. Cause I didn't and and this is this is what we ended up. Oh, so no. this is the last whiskey called uh, Compass Box Stranger and Stranger. This will be released in the U.S. in March. You're getting a sneak preview of it now for for, for, for tonight. I like it. <laughs> but I know you were. You, this I know this has got your hand your, your fingerprints all over it. Cause. This, well, this, I mean, is, this is Cos's baby. Yeah. Cos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was really quite simple. It was just talking about the marriage between and this relationship that we have with you, and really combining these two things together. And a lot of it was evoked by the hand of God painting, and, and that kind of sparking something really interesting there and magical and combining our, our graphics together, and that was basically it. And we wanted to bring it back to a time um, where a romantic uh, renaissance, uh, I guess, artistic style was, uh, was born, and that was basically it. But there was one line when, when John was briefing, he was talking about what, he was gonna, what the recipe was gonna be, and he talked about this sacrificial spirit in that recipe and that actually stuck with us when we were designing because it was like this idea of having this godly spirit yeah. on the lane so that got translated into what you see now basically so and the sacrificial spirit of this whiskey and again the recipes will give you the recipes come by the table but um this is actually technically not going to be scotch whiskey because one percent of this recipe is only one year old Oh, yeah, and we, 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 we had these extraordinary custom-made barrels uh, made for us in Missouri, and we filled them with what we call sacrificial spirit, because we just want to take the big hit of oak out of them before we filled them with malt whiskey for the long haul. And we pulled out that what we call sacrificial spirit, and it turned out to taste really nice, quite concentrated, so just small amounts of it really enrich a malt whiskey. And so, it, but we couldn't call it scotch because Scotch has to be a minimum three years old, even though one percent of the recipe is all this is. So we thought, you know, what better? Small barrels. 
No, no, regular 100, 200 liter barrels. But we thought, what a great opportunity. We're gonna call this Stranger and Stranger. Who cares if it's not Scotch whiskey? It's Stranger and Stranger. This is the time to use such a, a sacrificial spirit. So that's, that was the thinking behind it. It's Folks, called a spirit drink. It is in Europe. It is a spirit drink. Yeah. So it says it here. Yeah. <laughs> Ridiculously expensive spirit drink. <laughs> <laughs> that is exactly what it is. If I, sorry, if I could ask a question. Yeah, real quick. Um, real quick. Uh, so the, the sequencing typically at tasting is not random. Uh, so would, would you mind telling us what the logic is behind the sequencing of the spirits that we tasted tonight? I like to start with grain whiskey. I like to start with hedonism. It's a whiskey that, that, that helped me launch the company. And then we went into, um, we went in order of weight and in complexity, so juveniles. I think more personality as we go, as we yep. go on from one to And then I wanted to finish, even though you might have put this Stranger and Stranger whiskey stylistically in the middle of the tasting, I wanted to finish with it because it was a nice ending to cap uh, this, 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 uh, this look at 10 years of working together with these guys. So guys, they're going to kick us out in a minute, um, and they're very, they're very prompt and, and, and good at this. So um, before try to tr preempt that, um, I'll, we'll, I'll hang around and outside and, and come to our table and ask more questions. I know there's probably a lot of questions that we didn't get a chance to answer, but this is I hope you found an insightful tasting and different than you've, anything you've ever done before. I want to say thank you to all you guys, and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10 out of a total of what these days? 32. So that's a pretty good show. So thank, I want to say thank you to Stranger and Stranger. Kevin, I thank you very much. And thank all you guys for your for your. So guys, as you can see, I met John Glazer, and he signed my special tonight's poison bottle, but I also got signed miniatures for possibly having you guys win one of these sometime soon. More to come on that. Comment in the video if you would like to win one.